Good evening to everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. Uh, you know, I think I say the same thing every week. I always say, oh, this is, this is great and this is good. Well, truly, I'm going to say this tonight before we get started. Is this, You know, God, truly, his ways are not our ways. And that is the thing that you have to come into an understanding of. God's ways truly are not our ways. And so tonight, I need you just to listen. Listen to what is being taught to us. Because it's very important. Because understanding and knowing God causes us to move so differently. It is the thing that makes us peculiar. You know how the Bible talks about a peculiar people? Well, what makes them peculiar? But you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to get into that in a minute. But I need you just to listen tonight. Just listen. And as you listen, you'll come into understanding. And truly understand this. There are going to be a lot of people that get a lot of answers tonight concerning your situation and the things that you're dealing with. So just please just listen. And we're just going to get some understanding tonight. Amen. So we're going to go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. This is going to be real good. This is good. When I get excited, it's good. This is good because, you know, the thing I love about God is he's constantly teaching. And I always say this to people, as long as you have breath in your body, you're teachable. And that is how God thinks about it. And I don't got time to go into it, but just look at it in Exodus 34. You'll see it. But we're going to go to Isaiah 66 uh, and we're going to read three verses. So get your pen and your paper. And we're going to go to Isaiah 66. So let us pray. Then we'll get into the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for everything that you're doing in this hour and that you're doing through your people. God, these are your people. You know, their hearts, their minds, their concerns, their desires, their fears, everything that troubles their heart. So now, God, do what only you can do. Speak to them according to your knowledge of their heart. Allow them to understand that you are ever mindful and ever present. God, let it rain in here tonight. We bless you. We praise you right now in the resurrected name of your Christ. We pray and everybody said, amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 12 through 14. Listen to what it says. For thus said the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck. Ye shall be born upon her sides and be dangled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your hearts shall rejoice, your bones shall flourish like an herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants, and his indignation towards his enemies. Amen. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight. The city, the city of the Lord. The city of the Lord. Understand this. This is the foundation of what we're doing tonight. Truly, God's thoughts, his thoughts and his ways are not our ways. So therefore, understand that in order for God to accomplish his purpose through a people, they must be sanctified and understand sanctification or set, being set apart happens through God giving you a knowledge of, of who he is or his authority. Understand, sanctification happens through the Lord giving you a knowledge, a knowledge of his authority and who he is. And I want to establish this truth. I want to go to two places. The first place I want to go is, let's go to Deuteronomy 29. I want you to understand, the Lord sanctifies, listen to what I'm saying, he sanctifies his servant or his people through giving them a knowledge of him and his authority. The people of God must be sanctified in order for the Lord to accomplish his purpose in the earth through them. What makes us peculiar is our knowledge of heavenly things. And heavenly things are hidden and given to those in whom the Lord is well pleased. So understand, sanctification, 
Sanctification is the Lord setting you apart through your knowledge of heavenly things. And we're going to get into that tonight because that's very important. Please understand, it's not so much about your speech as it is about your knowledge. What betrays you in your speech is your knowledge of heavenly things. Let me show it to you. Two places. I don't want to stay here long because I got a lot to get to. But first place I want to go is Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29. Listen now. Listen. Because we're going to delve deeply tonight into the ministry or the work of the prophet. And listen to this. Watch this. Because it's important. Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29. Listen to this. 29 verse 29 in Deuteronomy chapter 29. 29 and 29. Listen to what it says. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things, listen, which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of the law. So understand, we're sanctified through our knowledge of heavenly things which are given to us through an established servant that heaven makes manifest the things that are hidden from men. Don't want you to miss this. Because that's what sets us apart. It's not so much what we say, but it's what we have knowledge of. Second place, Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Listen to this. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this up because I want you to see it. Open your eyes and see and listen. So we're in the book of Joel. And Joel is the prophet of the Lord. But as the prophet explains to the people the purpose of heaven prospering you, he gives them an understanding for the purpose for heaven prospering you. Listen to verse 27. I'm going to say this to you. If heaven does not prosper you, then it's impossible to obtain knowledge about heavenly things. And he the knowledge of heavenly things is what sanctifies us and sets us apart and makes it easy to identify us as the people of the Lord. Listen to the prophet as he gives them an understanding to the Lord's purpose for prospering them. 27, listen to what it says. Joel 2, 27. And you shall know, so listen, know or have knowledge. Or you shall have knowledge that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So understand, the purpose of the Lord prospering his people is to give them knowledge or heavenly knowledge. And they're sanctified by that knowledge. Not only are they sanctified by the increase, the increase is great. But it is the knowledge of heavenly things that sanctifies them that allows the Lord to operate or dwell with them and accomplish his purpose through them. That's why the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall do what? See God. But seeing him is what allows them to obtain the knowledge. So understand this. I'm going back to Isaiah 66 because it's going to be important. This is the Lord's time to sanctify the remnant through giving them knowledge of heavenly things. Please understand, what's important to the Lord is that the remnant have a knowledge of heavenly things, that he be sanctified and glorified in them according to their understanding of things that are hidden from men. Are you hearing me? So let's keep going. Watch this. For thus saith the Lord. Now understand this. This is good. The purpose or the work, the purpose or the work of the prophet, the purpose for the work or the ministry of the prophet is that through executing the judgments of heaven in the earth, the authority of the Lord may be made manifest. What is the purpose for a prophet? What is the purpose for a, the ministry or the work of the prophet? The purpose for the work or the ministry of the prophet of the Lord is that through executing, listen, through executing the judgments of heaven, he causes the authority of the Lord to be seen in the earth. Understand, what is the purpose of the prophet or the work of the prophet or his ministry? It is that through executing the judgments of heaven, we're going to get into that, the judgments of heaven, he causes the authority of the Lord to be seen in the earth. That's the purpose 
of the work of the prophet or the ministry of the prophet. It's that the Lord, through the prophet executing the judgments of heaven, may cause the authority of the Lord to be seen in the earth. Let me give you a few witnesses, and then we're going we're gonna to get deeper. First place I want to go is, let's go to Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. I want, I want to see this. Now, this is foundationally true. It has not changed. It's foundationally true. It's just that the church hasn't understood the purpose. And once I get to the, the purpose and what it is supposed to do, it's going to change everything. Listen, Exodus chapter 7, verses 4 and 5. Listen to it. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know, circle the word know, because they shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. So it is by Moses, the Lord's prophet, that he would execute the judgments of heaven, that there may be a knowledge, understand, that there may be a knowledge or cause people to see the authority of the Lord in the earth. That is the purpose. You can go all over. I'm just going to throw one at you and I'm not even going to go there. We can go to 1 Kings chapter 17. And when you see Elijah show up to the king and he says, there shall not be rain by my word according to these days. Well, once that rain stopped, the king was able to see through the ministry of the prophet, the authority of the Lord in the earth. That is the purpose or the work of the ministry of the prophet. Let me keep going. I got a couple more witnesses. What's the next one I want to go? Let's go backwards. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Listen now. Listen. There's a purpose for ministry. There's a purpose for the Lord giving you a work. And remember, any ministry or work that the Lord gives a servant, it's all about making the kingdom of heaven manifest in the earth. Are you hearing me? So you can't be talking about doing ministry if the kingdom, if the authority of the kingdom of heaven isn't made manifest in the earth. Remember what Jesus said. I'm just doing this here for free. Watch this. Watch, 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 watch. watch. I'm going to come back to that. But talking to you, I just seen this. I like this one. John chapter 5. Watch. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Watch this. John chapter 5. Listen. Listen. Anybody that knows me, I'm going to do this to you. John chapter 5, verse 36. Watch. Watch. So now listen. What color are the words? They're red. Who's doing the talking? The prophet. What is he sharing? He is sharing a secret concerning the kingdom of heaven. Listen to what he says. But I have a greater witness. Listen, a greater witness than that of John for the works, for the works which the father has given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the father has sent me. So what was the work of the prophet or what was the purpose of the ministry that the Lord had given to Jesus? It was to cause the people to see the authority of heaven in the earth. The purpose of the ministry, the purpose of the work was to cause the people to see the authority of heaven in the earth. Let me go backwards. Come on, you just keep following me. You do your work. You do your work. Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Watch now. Listen, listen. I'm going to throw verse 7 in because it's there. Because I don't want to miss it. Look at it. Genesis chapter 20, verse number 7. Listen to what it says. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Now, look at verse 20. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. So wait a minute. The purpose for the work or the ministry of the prophet was to cause the authority of heaven to be seen in the earth. Are you following me? Do not be deceived. Ministry is making manifest the authority of heaven in the earth. When the Lord gives a servant the work of the kingdom of heaven, the purpose for giving that servant work is to make the authority of heaven manifest 
in the earth or the authority of the Lord manifests in the earth. Now we're going to get to the purpose in a minute, but understand there's a purpose for making his authority manifest in the earth, but the purpose for giving the prophet the work or the ministry is that the prophet may cause the authority of the Lord to be seen in the earth. I got one last witness. I got one last witness. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Watch. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch now. Matthew chapter 4. We'll go to verse 23. Listen. Listen. Verse 23. Listen to what it says. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So Jesus, the Lord's prophet, the purpose for giving the purpose of his work or his ministry was to cause the authority of heaven to be seen in the earth. Now, whenever the Lord makes his authority seen in the earth through a prophet, the purpose is to cause the people's hearts to turn towards him and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. That is the purpose of the work or the ministry of the prophet. It is to cause the people, cause the Lord's authority to be seen in the earth. But the purpose of the authority is to cause the people to turn their hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Let me give you a couple of witnesses and then we're going to move on. Um, it's just, we're going to go right over here. Verse 17. Listen, verse 17, I want you to listen. You've read it a thousand times. The question was, were you listening? Listen to it. Verse 17 in Matthew says this. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So therefore, what was the purpose of him causing people to see the authority of the Lord in the earth? To cause him to turn their hearts towards the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Let me give you another witness. We're going to go to Luke. We're going to go to Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I want you to miss this. Luke chapter 1. Listen to Luke chapter 1. I want you to see this is the purpose of the Lord's prophet manifesting his authority in the earth. Listen to this. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power. Circle the word power. Listen. Power of Elijah. Is not Elijah a prophet? Yes. And what did Elijah do? He caused the people to see the authority of the Lord made manifest in the earth. But look at the purpose. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So understand, the, per, the work or the ministry of a prophet is to cause you to see the authority of heaven in the earth. The purpose for the manifestation of that authority is to turn the hearts of the people to the Lord and cause them to set their hearts on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven or the ways of the Lord as opposed to the ways of the world. Please understand the purpose, the ministry of the prophet is purposeful. It is according to the hearts of the people towards the Lord. And so therefore the work is purpose to cause them to turn their hearts towards the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding? Watch this. Let's keep going. I could go to another witness. I could. I could go to Isaiah 55. Let's just do it. Watch. I just want to do this. Isaiah 55. And then we're going to move on because I don't want to get caught up on this. Listen to this. Listen. Listen. Verse 5 and 6. Now I need 5 and 7. 5 says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. Here's where they're, here's where they're coming. For the Holy One. So the holiness of the Lord is his authority made manifest in the earth. 
the Holy One is the authority of heaven made manifest in the earth. Listen, the Holy One of Israel, because what is Israel? Israel is a servant or a people with whom the authority of heaven abides. So listen to him. The purpose for causing his authority to abide in the earth. This is in Isaiah 55 through a prophet. Listen, verse seven, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So once again, understand the purpose for the work or the ministry of the prophet is to cause the Lord, cause people to see the authority of the Lord in the earth. And the purpose for manifesting his authority through a prophet is to turn the hearts of the people to the Lord and cause them to set their hearts on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. This is the work or the ministry of the prophet. Go through your scriptures and you will see it repeatedly. It's important because listen to verse 12. I'm going to snatch one word and we're going to get, get greater understanding. Behold. Now understand, this is the heart of, I love this. This is the heart of the Lord. Hear me. Understand. Whenever the Lord desires to show you or reveal to you his judgment or what he is doing, and literally what the Lord is doing, he's doing it according to his judgment. But when his heart is to show you or his desire is to show you what he is doing. Now understand, he will make it manifest through his prophet. But when his heart is to show you what he is doing or, or his judgment, literally what he is doing, like I said, is his judgment. Because anything he does is according to his judgment. And so understand, whenever he desires to do that, his purpose, his purpose is to make manifest his authority in the earth to cause the people to turn their hearts towards him and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Please understand, the heart of the Lord is made manifest in the ministry of his prophet because when he is willing to show you what he is doing, his heart is to cause people to see his authority and to turn their hearts towards him and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. When you don't have to petition God to show you what he is doing and he is willing or his heart is to show you, then his heart towards the people is to turn their hearts towards him and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Literally, the ministry now becomes about deliverance and salvation. Let me show you. Let me give you a couple of witnesses. Hallelujah. Watch now. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Watch. Listen to this. Genesis 18. Verse 17 through 19. Watch. Watch. And the Lord says, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? So now listen to the Lord's heart. His heart is to show what he is doing in the earth or to show his judgment. Listen to his purpose. Verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. So his heart is to show Abraham what he's doing, that Abraham may execute the judgment of the Lord in the earth, that the Lord may make manifest his authority. Let me share this with you so you understand this. Deliverance and salvation happen in the Lord's 
timing. And so whenever God is pleased with a servant and is prepared to manifest his authority for the purpose of deliverance and for the purpose of salvation, because salvation is delivering you from the power of the enemy through heaven manifesting its authority in the earth. But whenever heaven is prepared, to manifest its authority or to show you what it is doing, the purpose is deliverance and salvation to give you a knowledge of the authority of heaven to deliver you from the darkness you abide in and cause you to turn your hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. So right here in this scripture, just the word behold exemplifies or gives, bears witness to the Lord's heart to deliver his people from the darkness they abide in, in the lies they trust in, and through seeing his authority, cause them to turn their hearts toward him and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Remember, God deliberately hides himself until he is prepared to reveal himself for the purpose of causing people to know the truth about his authority and to deliver them from the lies they've trusted in and cause them to turn their hearts. The authority of heaven is what turns hearts. I could teach you all day long. I could give you understanding all day long. But what is going to cause your heart to turn is the authority of heaven made manifest, giving you a knowledge of the truth of its authority, causing you to be delivered from from what you presently trust in and then set your heart on the authority that has been made manifest and begin to walk in the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Are you following me? So when the Lord is prepared, when he says, when, he, when his heart is to show you, then his heart tendeth to salvation and deliverance. So the Lord is literally giving you an understanding that his heart at this moment is set on deliverance and salvation of those who presently abide in darkness. Let me give you another witness. I got a lot to do. I can't stay right there. I got a lot to do. John chapter five. I want you to see this. I like this one. John chapter five. John chapter five. Go to John chapter five. Listen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen now. John chapter 5, verse number 20. What color are these words? They're red. Who is doing the talking? The prophet. Now listen. What is he sharing? He is sharing a secret concerning the kingdom of heaven. Listen to Jesus. Listen to what he says. For the father loveth the son. Listen. He loveth the son. So it is according to the Lord's delight in him that he showeth him all things that himself doeth. So now watch, watch, according to his heart, he desires to show him what he is doing. Look at the purpose. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. So the Lord's heart is to show him what he is doing that he may make his manner, make his authority manifest in the earth. What's the purpose? To cause the people to marvel or wonder at the authority of heaven. But the wondrous acts of heaven reveal the truth concerning the authority of heaven. And when heaven makes manifest its authority, the purpose is to manifest truth. But when heaven's heart is to show you what it is doing, then heaven's heart or the Lord's heart is to deliver or the Lord's heart is to give salvation to those that abide in darkness according to the, to the knowledge that they trust in. So think about what Jesus is saying. He's teaching them. He says, the father showeth me all things, not just to show me, but that you may marvel at the authority that you see. So the what? Remember what the scripture says, except they see signs and wonders. So to marvel is to see something wondrous. 
But the purpose of wonders is to cause you to believe. And what is the Lord desiring that you believe in? He desires that you believe in the authority of heaven in the earth. That when you see it, that it delivers you and that salvation happens and you are delivered from the darkness you abide in and the lies you trust in and turn your heart towards the Lord and set it on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Are you following me? So understand, behold, literally is the heart of the Lord. It's him desiring to show you what he is doing. But what is even bigger is his heart is set on salvation and deliverance of those that abide in darkness and have no knowledge of the truth concerning the authority of heaven. And that truth is what will deliver them and set them free from the darkness they abide in and cause them to forsake their trust in the ways of the world and set their hearts on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. That is the Lord's heart towards the remnant in this hour. Let's keep going. I got to go. I got to go. I got to keep going. Watch this. Watch this. He says, I will extend peace to her like a river. Now understand, remember what I said at the top. Understand, this is that you may know the authority of the Lord in the earth and turn your hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Please understand. So now let's understand this. Listen to this. All of this is that you may see the authority of heaven, of the Lord in the earth and that you may set your heart on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. First word we got to deal with is her. Take the word her. Her, circle it. Because her is literally the place that the Lord has chosen in the earth to establish where he can be found. Now understand, her is the place in the earth that the Lord will establish where he can be found. I've said it a hundred times. It's in Las Vegas and Henderson. So understand, but to cause you to understand, listen to what he says, thus said the Lord. So it's about understanding his authority in the earth. So to get you to understand his authority in the earth, he's going to give peace, the peace of the Lord to this place by his authority that you through seeing his authority may be set free and turn your hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. The first thing we have to understand, let's get this clear. What is the peace of the Lord? Let's understand what is the peace of the Lord. And I have to say this because today all day long, the Lord just kept nailing this to me. Understand there is a standard to the way that heaven operates. Heaven will not deviate from that standard that you may have a confidence in the faithfulness of heaven. You want me to say it again? There is a standard to the way that heaven does things and heaven will not deviate from that standard that you may have a confidence in the faithfulness of heaven towards those that keep his commandments. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it one more time. There is a standard to how heaven does things and heaven does not deviate from that standard that you may have a confidence in the faithfulness of heaven towards those that keep his commandments. I'm going to throw this scripture here for free so you can get it, so you can hold on to it. But let me show it to you. I'm going to, I'm going to get back. We're going to define the peace of the Lord, but I want you to hear this before we do that. First place, I just want to throw this one here. I'm going to go to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. And you can just write it down, but I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to start defining the peace of the Lord. Malachi chapter 3. Listen to this. Watch. Malachi chapter 3. My page is sticking together. Listen to what Malachi chapter 3 says. Verse number 6. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So listen to the Lord. Understand, he is faithful to the standard by which he operates. 
that you and I may have a confidence in his faithfulness to those that keep his commandments. Are you following me? So let's define, because to get you to understand his authority in the earth to the place that he has chosen to establish where he can be found in the earth, he's going to give the peace of the Lord. So the peace of the Lord will cause you to understand his authority in the earth and cause you to turn your heart towards the Lord and set it on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Let's show you what the peace of the Lord is. First place we're going to go is Genesis. Not Genesis, Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26. Listen to this. Verse number six. This is the peace of the Lord. And I will give peace in the land. Watch this. And you shall lie down. So the peace of the Lord causes you to rest. Hear this. And none shall make you afraid. Well, wait a minute. That sounds kind of familiar. That sounds like the exact same thing he told Joshua, isn't it? Because if I remember correctly, what did he tell Joshua? He told Joshua, he says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. So he was telling Joshua that I would give you peace. So the peace of the Lord is that you shall rest. He will cause you to rest and none shall make you afraid. And there shall be no, he says, and, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid the evil beasts out of the land. And there shall be no evil in your land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. So there will be no war in the place that the Lord plants you to prosper. So the peace of the Lord is fourfold. The peace of the Lord is that he causes you to rest. That he causes you not to be afraid of anyone. That he causes there to be no evil in the place that he causes you to abide and that there be no war. Are you hearing me? Let me, let me, let's, let's keep searching. Peace of the Lord. Next place I want to go. Listen, is first Kings chapter five, first Kings chapter five, first Kings chapter five. Listen now, listen. So now listen to Solomon. Sounds just like Leviticus 26. He says, first Kings five and four. Listen to what Solomon says. But now the Lord my God hath given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurring. So therefore, listen, Solomon once again defines the peace of the Lord. He says that he's given him rest and none shall make him afraid. There is no evil in the land and there is no war. That is the peace of the Lord. Let me give you one more witness. One more witness. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 34, Ezekiel chapter 34, Ezekiel chapter 34, Ezekiel chapter 34. Watch this. Listen now. I need, see, I want you to understand something. People throw terms around very carelessly. They just throw them around and you receive them without having an understanding of them. So if you lack an understanding of these, th of the things of heaven, then it makes you easy to be deceived. But please understand, heaven intends to fulfill every one of the world, every standard that it has set concerning the things of heaven. So if heaven outlines them, then heaven purposes, when it declares the peace of the Lord, it purposes to fulfill the peace of the Lord, that each one of these things would be made manifest, that you would know the authority of heaven in the earth to do this and understand the faithfulness of heaven to a servant that keeps its commandments. And you would have an expectation of what to expect. So the peace of the Lord is fourfold. Let me show it to you again. Watch this. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, watch this, listen to this. 25, and I will make with them a covenant of peace and I will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Listen to this, verse 28. And they shall be no more prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. So now please understand, what is the peace of the Lord? The peace of the Lord is the Lord causes you to rest. He causes you to rest. He causes none to make you afraid. He causes there to be no evil in the land. And he causes none to war with you. 
Are you hearing me? So in order for the Lord to cause you to understand his authority in the earth, he's telling you the place that he's going to establish where he can be found or the city of the Lord, the place that he can be found in Las Vegas and Henderson. He's going to give it peace. What is the purpose of the peace? The purpose of the peace is that you would know the authority of the Lord in the earth and cause you to turn your hearts towards the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven and know that there is none else that could give peace like the Lord. Are you hearing me? Understand this. This is good. This is good. Understand this. The things that the Lord considers for his timing, hear me, the things that the Lord considers for his timing are impossible for us to consider. What do I mean? Okay, let me show you what I mean. There's a purpose for calling her, calling the place that he's going to establish where he can be found, her. Because hear me, God considers things that are impossible for us to consider and for his timing. And the reason he's prepared to give such knowledge of his authority is the heart's of all of the people that believe or think that it is impossible for the place that he has chosen to establish where he can be found, they believe that it is impossible for this type of fruit, the peace of the Lord, and what else I'm about to talk about, they believe that it is impossible for this place to bear this type of fruit. And it is according to their hearts being where the Lord needs them to be is he prepared to move. And also the heart of his servant, the prophet, through keeping his commandments is in the place that the Lord needs it to be in order for him to move. So please understand there's a purpose to the peace of the Lord. And the purpose to that, to the peace of the Lord is to give you knowledge concerning the authority of the Lord in the earth. And that knowledge is that there is none else that could give such peace. And remember, the peace is fourfold. So what you are expecting to see the Lord give to this place is to cause the people to rest, to cause them to fear no man, to cause no evil to abide in the place, and also to cause none to be at war with it. When you see these things, it is purpose for you to be delivered and salvation be given to you that your heart may be set free from the things that it trusts in and cause you to set them on the righteousness and the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say amen. Come on, I got to keep going. Let's go. Let's watch this. And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Okay, watch this. This is good because I don't want you to miss this. Purpose. Once again, this is that you may know the authority of the Lord in the earth and that through knowing it, I'm going to say this again. This is good. Through knowing it, because are you hearing me? Through knowing the authority, turn your hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteous, set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. And to do that, the Lord is going to give, give the wealth of those that don't believe. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I didn't want to forget this. And the peace is going to be continuous. Are you following me? The peace is going to flow. It's going to not end. It's going to flow. That is in, that is important because take the fourfold peace, mix it with the flow, and it's intended to deliver your heart and give salvation to your heart. But to also to give you knowledge of his authority, the Lord to the same place is going to give the wealth of the Gentiles or the wealth of those that don't believe in doing things his way. Let me say this to you. Understand this. Those that don't believe in doing things God's way, they are glorified by their wealth, not their authority. 
Their wealth allows you clearly to see that there is none else like them. That's why we have the top 10 richest people in the world, because their wealth is what allows you to see that there is none else like them. So the Lord, to give you an understanding of his authority in the earth, he's going to cause the wealth of those that don't believe in doing things his way, he's going to give it to the place that he has chosen to establish where he can be found and he's going to cause it to flow. Now watch this. This is going to help a lot of people. I hope you're listening. So you know how in church, it's they, they talk about wealth from a very covetous perspective. Let me share this with you. The Lord gives wealth so that you may clearly see his authority in the earth. Understand this. I, I don't know how many times I've said this. I'm going to say it again. So now do you understand why you can't take wealth with you? Because what's more important than the wealth? It is the knowledge of the authority of heaven. Because what you will take with you when you die or when you leave here will be the contents of your heart. And what God needs to be in your heart is the knowledge of the authority of heaven. So why does God give wealth? The purpose of wealth, of him giving wealth, is that you may clearly see his authority in the earth. That's why you see kings all throughout the Bible. And the Lord takes the king's wealth and gives it to his people. It's not about the wealth. It's about seeing the authority of the Lord. So for the remnant, this is God's time for you to see his authority. What's the purpose? To give you salvation and to give you deliverance that you may turn your heart toward the Lord and trust in his ways and not trust in what you're trusting in now. So let me show you carefully. The purpose for the Lord giving wealth is that you may see his authority. Let me show it to you. Watch this. Watch this. So what's the purpose of get, causing wealth to flow into this place? It's about you seeing his authority and the Lord giving you salvation and giving deliverance to you that your heart may be set free from what it trusts in. I'm going to say this again. I cannot talk you out of trusting in what you trust in, but the authority of heaven can deliver you from trusting in what you trust in and set you free from what you trust in and cause your heart to turn towards the Lord and set it on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Watch now. Watch. Watch. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. You know it. If you grew up in a church like me, you know it. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see it differently. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse 18. Listen to what it says. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Listen. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. So wait a minute. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. So what's the purpose of the Lord giving you wealth? That you may see his authority in the earth. Are you understanding? The reward is seeing the authority of heaven. But watch now, what's the purpose, Lord, of you giving wealth to this place and causing it to flow? It's a deliverance. It's salvation. That those that he purposes to cause to occupy it may be delivered and he may give them salvation from what they trust in and cause them to set their hearts on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Let me give you another witness. I'm going to say this again. I want you to understand this. Watch. The Lord gives wealth. I want you to see how wealth fits into the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord gives wealth by his authority. He commands wealth to be given to his servant. What is the purpose for giving wealth? That you may see his authority. So let me help you understand this. If you've never seen the Lord command wealth to someone, it's impossible for you to put your confidence in the covenant of the Lord as your source of increase. So you're going to trust the ways of the world. But when you see it, what's the purpose of making it manifest? that you would be given salvation, that you would be given deliverance, and that your heart would be set free 
Are you hearing me? That your heart would be set free from the bondage that it abides in and trusts in and be set on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. I got something I'm going to show you in a minute that's going to be really good. Watch. Let me keep going. I'm going to show you why the Lord gives wealth. Understand how God thinks about wealth. Understand. What, I, what do I need next? Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 1. Second Chronicles chapter 1. Watch now. Watch. Watch. What's the purpose of telling us, God, that the wealth is going to flow? Because let me, let me share this with you. This is what's so funny to me. Because... The covetous people are hung up on the wealth. They're, that's all they want to talk to you about is the wealth. Oh, yeah, the Lord's going to give us wealth. No. Hey, I'm talking about deliverance and salvation right now. And that's his purpose for making this place wealthy. Are you hearing me? That those that witness it may be through witnessing, witnessing it may be given deliverance and salvation. And let's make sure we understand what salvation is. Salvation only happens by the authority of the Lord. And what is the Lord setting me free from? He's setting me free from the darkness I abide in and trust in. God does not set you free so that you can keep operating according to the world system. He sets you free that you would set your heart on the ways of the kingdom of heaven. So it's going to make you contrary to the world. That's the purpose of salvation and deliverance. I ain't going to get into that. I got more to do. I got to watch this. Watch this. Did I say 2 Chronicles chapter 1? I did. Okay, we're still dealing with the Lord giving wealth. Listen, verse number 12, 2 Chronicles 1 and 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee. Listen to God. I will give thee. Listen to God. I will give thee. Listen to the Lord. I will give thee. Wait a minute. He wants to give him wealth. He wants to give him wealth. So let me ask you a question. God wants to give him wealth for the sake of making him wealthy or for the sake of giving him knowledge? Right. Because in giving him the wealth, it allows Solomon to clearly see the authority of heaven in the earth. He can't give him thousands. There's no authority in that. He can't give him hundreds. There's no authority in that. Are you hearing me? It has to be wealth. Therefore, he takes that wealth and from one and gives it to Solomon that Solomon can clearly see his authority in the earth and now once again set his heart firmly on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Let me keep going. I got one more. I got two more witnesses. Next one. Next one. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. You know it. If you've been in church like me, you know it your whole life. You just never understood it. Let me show you. Listen. Listen. Proverbs 13, 22. Listen what it says. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Listen to this. Now, wait a minute. I like this. Who's doing the talking? Solomon. And what type of wisdom is Solomon giving you? He's giving you the wisdom of heaven, which is truly giving you the ways of the kingdom of heaven. Listen to this. And the wealth of the sinner. Oh, wait a minute. The wealth of the sinner. Wait a minute. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The just are those that God establishes as his servant according to their good works. But he justifies their service through taking someone else's wealth, the sinner, and giving it to those that he purposes to justify. So what is the Lord's purpose for giving wealth? It is that his authority may be seen in the earth. Are you understanding? That is God's sole purpose for giving wealth. So when God says to a servant, I'm going to give you wealth, what he really is saying to the servant is because you've been faithful, you get to see me. And the way you see the Lord is you see his authority because the Lord is a spirit. So you can't see a spirit, but truly you can see the authority of the spirit of the Lord when he commands your wealth be given to you. And he gives wealth for the purpose of making his authority manifest in the earth. Watch this. Last witness. Last witness. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Watch. Watch this. Listen. 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 Verse number 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. 
They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto thee the wealth of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. So I'm going to say this to you again so no one deceives you. The Lord gives wealth that his authority may be manif made manifest in the earth. So the purpose, listen now, purpose, write this down, because the Lord is going to build a city for the sake of deliverance. And he's going to cause wealth to flow into the place that he has chosen to establish where he can be found for this purpose, deliverance and salvation. That he may make that he may make manifest his authority in the earth, that those that witness it will be delivered and given salvation, that they may be set free from the darkness they abide in and trust in, and cause them to turn their hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. I'm gonna say this again: the things that the Lord uses to that he considers. For his timing, it's impossible for us. And the purpose and the reason that his timing is upon us is because the hearts of the people are in place and the Lord now is set to move because it's impossible for you to consider the hearts of men. But the Lord considers that those who believe that the place he's chosen to establish where he can be found in Las Vegas, in Henderson, they believe that it is impossible, and that's where he needed their heart to move to, to the place where they believe it's impossible for this place to bring forth this type of fruit, and for the heart of his servant to be where he needs it to be, to use him in a manner in which he can be glorified him according to manifesting his authority in the earth. Let's keep going. Watch this. It gets better. Then shall you suck. You shall be born upon her sides and be dangled upon her knees. Understand, what did I tell What do I keep saying? I keep saying this over and over again. Purpose. What's the purpose of this? That the Lord may make through his the work or the ministry of the prophet cause his authority to be seen in the earth. That you may turn your hearts toward him and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, you ready? I need you to write this down because this is going to be a lot. Okay. He needs you to understand the Lord needs you to understand his purpose for giving peace and wealth. I'm going to say it again for sometimes I have to slow down and think because understand, listen to how God is just talking about two exceedingly great things, peace and wealth. But he wants you to understand his purpose for giving peace and wealth to the place that he has chosen to establish where he can be found. Here it is. And what did I tell you the purpose of the work of the ministry of the prophet is? It is to cause you to see the authority of the Lord in the earth. And the purpose for giving the peace and the wealth to this place is that you may know the Lord's authority to give abundant life. Are you hearing me? I, I want to make sure you get this because deliverance is set to happen in the earth through the knowledge of what the abundant life looks like. Hear me. The purpose for giving peace and wealth to this place is that you may know the Lord's authority in the earth. Let me share this with you. You want to know why people have not set their hearts on the ways of heaven, but they go to church and they hear people talk about the abundant life, but they still operate by the world system to increase themselves. It's because they've never seen the abundant life and no one could clear, clearly define to them what the abundant life is. Well, hear me. The Lord says the purpose for giving these two things, this is the foundation of the abundant life. It is peace and wealth. And let me break it down for you, okay? Because peace, the peace of the Lord, let me make sure I clarify. The peace of the Lord tendeth to abundance. Understand, the purpose for the Lord giving peace is abundance. The peace of the Lord tendeth to abundance. 
Let me show it to you. Watch this. First place I want to go. First place I want to go is, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Then we go to Jeremiah. Psalms 37. Watch. Psalms 37. Watch this. Verse number 11. Watch this. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Are you hearing me? They shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Next place I want to go. Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. Watch this. Jeremiah 33. I'm going to throw something in for free. I'm thinking about it. I can see it. Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. Watch this. Jeremiah 33. Verse number six. Listen to what it says. Behold, I will bring it health and cure. And I will cure them and reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. So I'm, I'm going to say this again. Whenever the Lord gives peace, the purpose of peace, peace tendeth to abundance. His purpose is abundance. But what proceeds abundance is the peace of the Lord. And remember, the peace of the Lord is fourfold. So understand. What proceeds abundance is peace. One more place. Uh, Psalms, no, two more places. Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Listen to this. Listen to this. Verse number seven. Listen to what it says. In his days shall the righteous flourish in the abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. So now understand, understand the purpose for the Lord giving peace and wealth First place, first thing is abundance. Now, understand, riches and wealth tendeth to the covenant of the Lord. And the Lord establishes covenant with you to give you the life that pleases him, which is an abundant life. So when the Lord establishes covenant with you, what he gives you is the abundant life because the peace of the Lord is part of the covenant of the Lord. So he gives you peace and then through the peace, he abundantly gives you riches and wealth. Let me show it to you. Watch this. Uh, first place I want to go is uh, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 17. Watch. 2 Chronicles 17. 2 Chronicles 17. Listen to this. Watch. Verse number five. Watch. And you have to really pay attention to what you're reading. You must pay attention. Listen. Verse five says, therefore the Lord. So you have to circle the Lord because the Lord is the authority of heaven. Right? So listen to what he says. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presence. Listen. And he had riches and honor and abundance. The abundance can only come through the peace. So therefore, establish with him his covenant. And therefore, peace is part of that covenant. So the purpose of the peace is abundance. So that he would have riches and wealth abundantly and live the life that pleased the Lord, which is the abundant life. So when the Lord establishes his covenant with you, he gives you peace. And the purpose of the peace is abundance. So that through the abundance, the Lord can give you the life that pleases him, which is the abundant life. So when he establishes his covenant with you, he literally is giving you the life that pleases him. Because once again, the peace is part of his covenant. And the peace is to give you the abundance. And the increase is to give you the life. So therefore, when he gives you the peace of his covenant and gives you the increase of his covenant, he's giving you the life that pleases him, which is the abundant life. Because for the kingdom of heaven, there is no abundance without the peace of the Lord. Let me give you one more witness. One more witness. One more witness. One more witness. I'm still in Second Chronicles. I'm going to go to um, 32. 32. 32. Watch this. 32. Watch this. Listen now. Listen. And I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to go backwards so you get it. Watch. Verse 29, 2 Chronicles 32, 29. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance. Listen to this, in abundance. For God 
had given him substance very much. So what did the Lord give to Hezekiah? The Lord established his covenant with Hezekiah and establishing his covenant with him, he gave him the life that pleases him, which is an abundant life because it pleases the Lord to give his servant an abundant life. He gives him, he establishes his covenant. And when he establishes his covenant, he gives him the peace of the covenant, which is abundance. Then he also gives him the increase of the covenant, which allows him to give to his servant an abundant life. The peace of the Lord tendeth to abundance. The riches in the wealth tendeth to covenant. So when the Lord establishes his covenant with you, he's giving you the peace of his covenant and the increase of his covenant. And he's giving you a life that pleases him, which is an abundant life, a life in which he can be glorified because all see there is none else that has the authority to give you such a life. Can we go deeper? Can we really go deeper? So imagine abiding in abundance with resting in the abundant, being afraid of no man taking your abundance. Watch this. No evil abiding in your abundance and nobody making war with you to take your abundance. You want me to let you, let you think about that? Or you want me to say it again? I'm going to say it one more time. Listen to the abundant life. It is abiding in an abundance given to you by God that you rest in. That watch that you and that you have no fear of anyone taking it from you. And there is no evil around you as you abide in it. And you have no fear of any making war with you to take your abundance. That is the life that pleases the Lord. Why? See, watch now. Watch because he specifically defines the abundant life for you. And how long you been in church and you have not had an understanding of what the abundant life was? You heard it and then the first thing you did was you associated with something that man could create by his own hands. Well, the devil is a lie. Don't work like that. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to throw this in and then I'm going to move on because I got, I got a couple more things to get to. Watch this. I'm, I'm, this. This should make a lot of sense to you. This should make a lot of sense to you right here. This should make a lot of sense. Watch, watch. Psalms 35. Psalms 35, Psalms 35, 27. Listen to this. Let them joy, shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Let the Lord be magnified. Let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. I'm talking to the remnant. Hear me. Why does the Lord want to show you the abundant life? That you would have an understanding that it pleases the Lord to give the abundant life because in giving you the abundant life, he is magnified or glorified. Magnified means being clearly seen. So when he gives you the abundant life, he it is clearly seen that there is none else that has the authority to give such life unto men. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Are you understanding how God thinks? God is glorified in the life that he gives you. So therefore, that's why it pleases him to give you wealth. That's why it pleases him to give you peace. Because if you take the peace of the Lord and the wealth of the Lord, the Lord is giving you the life that pleases him. And you abide in that abundance or in that wealth. You rest in it. You have no fear of no man taking it from you. And you have no evil abiding anywhere near you. And you have no fear of anyone making war with you to take it from you. So that kind of sounds like Isaiah 54 when it says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn because when the Lord prospers you, you're going to make enemies, but those enemies will have no effect on you because you will abide in the abundance of the Lord according to the peace of the Lord. Somebody say amen. So watch now, understand the Lord is going to cause the remnant to see the abundant life that they may understand his authority in the earth 
and be given deliverance and salvation that they may turn their hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Come on, we're almost done. Watch this. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. And ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Teaching, teaching. Listen now, understand. Understand once again, the work or the ministry of the prophet, the purpose is to cause you to see the authority of the Lord in the earth. And listen now, the Lord needs the remnant to understand his heart towards them. Hear me. He needs them to understand his heart towards him and understand his heart towards them is that in this season, listen to me, everything that he does is to comfort your heart that you, let me, let me say something to you before I move to that. Understand God does not think like us and God will have us go through things that make no sense to the carnal mind. Because his thoughts are higher. Listen to him. Everything that he does in this season is going to be to comfort your heart. That you may know the authority of the Lord in the earth to know the heart. Are you hearing me? That you may know the authority of the Lord in the earth to know the heart. Understand, the Lord, when he manifests his authority by showing you his knowledge of the heart. And he's speaking to you according to your heart for the purpose of giving you an understanding of his authority in the earth to know the heart. Let me give you a few witnesses. Then we're going to move on. Watch this. First place I want to go. I want to go to 1 uh, Kings. No, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 19. Understand now. Watch. The work in the ministry of the prophet is that the Lord may cause you to know his authority, to know the heart. What's the purpose? It is deliverance and salvation. Understand, the purpose of my ministry or the purpose of my work is deliverance and salvation. And so the Lord is speaking to you according to your heart, that you may understand his authority in the earth to know the heart. First place, First Samuel Chapter 9, 1 Samuel chapter 9, 1 Samuel chapter 9. And it's going to get deeper after this. Watch, I'm going to show you. 1 Samuel chapter 9. Listen now, watch this. Verse 19, listen to what it says. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for you shall eat with me today and tomorrow. And I will let thee go and tell thee all that is in thine heart. What is the purpose of Samuel revealing to him the contents of his heart that he would know the authority of the Lord in the earth to know the hearts of men? It was important for him to know it, that he would be set free and be given deliverance, that his heart may turn towards the Lord and set it on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. That was the purpose. Let me give you another place. Watch this. Watch, watch. God's ways are not our ways. God does not think like us. Watch now. Watch. Genesis. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Verse 12 and 13. Listen to what it says. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, nay, but thou didst laugh. The Lord revealed to Sarah the contents of her heart for, the purpose, for this purpose, to cause her to know his authority in the earth. And I'm teaching you something that if you can hear it, you can receive it. Understand, when the Lord starts sharing with you, his knowledge of your heart, it is that you may know his authority in the earth and be set free, that you may be set free. The purpose of the ministry is deliverance and salvation to set you free according to your knowledge of his authority and cause you to turn your heart and set it on the right, turn your heart towards the Lord, excuse me, and set it 
on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. So listen very carefully to what I'm about to say to the remedy. The Lord knows, hear this, the Lord knows that your heart needs to be comforted. He knows that your heart needs to be comforted. The uncomfortableness you feel, it does not live in your flesh. The uncomfortableness you feel, it does not live in your mind. The uncomfortableness you feel, it abides in your heart according to your hope in the Lord. And the Lord needs you to understand this is deliberate. This is purposeful for the purpose of teaching you his authority in the earth to know the heart. And he says, I know you need to be comforted and you will be comforted and you will be comforted in the place. Hear this. Here's where you're going to find comfort. Here's where you're going to receive comfort in the place in Las Vegas, Henderson, that I have chosen to establish where I can be found. So now I'm, a, I'm kind of ahead of myself, but I'm going to come back to it. But hear me. He knows you need to be comforted. He, need, he knows you need to be comforted. And so he says, you will be, but you will be comforted in a very particular place. And you're going to be comforted through witnessing the authority of heaven. Somebody say, amen. Come on, I got to keep going. Watch this. I got two more points. And I'm done. Watch this. He says, and when you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like an herb. Listen to me. Once again, understand, this is what I love about God. This is what I love. Listen now, listen. What's the purpose here? That you, this is the work in the ministry of the prophet. Remember, the purpose is that the authority of heaven may be made manifest in the earth. That you may have your, that your hearts may be turned towards the Lord. Simply, I, I got to say this. The purpose of the ministry is deliverance and salvation. Understand that. The purpose of the ministry or the work is deliverance and salvation. And understand, the Lord needs you to understand his authority in the earth to know the thoughts of the heart. Please understand, to know the thoughts of the heart. And this is going to help a lot of people when they hear it because they will understand why God has done the things that he's done because he's speaking to you according to your heart. And understand, when the Lord causes you to know, when he causes you to know that he knows the thoughts of your heart, the purpose is that you may know his authority in the earth to know the thoughts of the, of the heart. And know that and be delivered. But let me give you a few, few witnesses and then we're going to get to it. But understand, when the Lord reveals to you the thoughts of your heart, the purpose is that you may know his authority in the earth to know the hearts of men. Let me give you two witnesses. Then we're going to move on. Watch this. First place. First Chronicles 28. First Chronicles 28. First Chronicles 28. Watch that. Watch, 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 watch. watch. First Chronicles 28, watch. Listen to this, verse number nine. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord, listen now, for the Lord. And remember, the Lord is all, whenever you see Lord, it's always about his authority. So now understand, the Lord's posture at this time is causing his authority in the earth to be known for the purpose of deliverance and salvation. Authority is all about giving knowledge to set people free. Go through your Bible. Authority isn't just randomly thrown around as to show you something as a new car or a new house. It's purposeful. And understand, when the Lord manifests his authority on this wise, to give you an understanding of his authority to know the thoughts of the heart. The purpose is to give deliverance and salvation to those that abide in darkness through the knowledge and cause them to turn their hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Listen to this. Watch this. 
He says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know the, thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. So they're understanding. When the Lord causes you to know that he understands the thoughts of the heart, the purpose is that you would know his authority in the earth and be set free and be delivered and turn your heart towards the Lord and set it on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. I got two more witnesses. Then I'm, I'm, I'm a, I got a good one, the last one. But this one, I like this one. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. I'm, 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 I'm talking to you. I want you to hear me. Watch now. The ministry of the prophet isn't about impressing you. It's about delivering you. It's about saving you. You want me to say it again? The ministry of the prophet is not about impressing you. It's about delivering you. It's about saving you. Are you understanding? I'm going to say that one more time because we live in a time where the ministry of the prophet is perceived or giving off as a means to impress you or cause you to think better of them. I am here to tell you that the work or the ministry of the prophet is about delivering you and saving you. Are you understanding? Because if you are paying attention I'm going to take you to Jeremiah chapter 17. I want you to see this with your own eyes. Hear me. I'm going to say this again. The ministry or the work of the prophet is not about impressing you or causing you to esteem them. The Lord gives a prophet for the... You want me to go to the beginning? Can I just go to the beginning? Watch. What did God send Moses to do? He sent him to save them, did he not? What did he send Elijah to do? He sent him to save them, did he not? What did he send Jesus to do? He sent him to save them, did he not? So therefore, if you understand that, then you understand that if the Lord has raised up a prophet, it's not to impress you, it's not to show you something great, it is to deliver you or save you. So now watch, take that truth Watch this. Watch. Because I see people trying to call people's phone numbers and calling their addresses. God not interested in that. Are you hearing me? God is interested in delivering you through the knowledge of his authority, through revealing to you that there is none that can know the thoughts of the heart like the Lord. Watch. Jeremiah 17. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord. So when the Lord reveals to you the thoughts of you, when he sends a prophet to deliver you or give you salvation, when the prophet starts revealing to you the thoughts of your heart, the purpose is that you may know the authority of the Lord in the earth and be given the truth concerning his authority and the Lord giving you deliverance and salvation to turn your hearts towards the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. I'm talking real good. The question is, are you listening? This type of ministry, when the Lord and what the Lord is doing through the prophet delivers will happen through revealing to you the thoughts of your heart, that you may know the truth about the authority of the Lord in the earth and be given salvation and deliverance and turn your hearts toward the Lord and set them on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. God ain't interested in calling your phone number out. He ain't interested in calling out where you live. He ain't interested in telling you what you ate or what you did last week. But what he is interested in is when he starts giving you an understanding of his knowledge of the thoughts of your heart, the purpose is deliverance and salvation. Last one, and then I'm going to move on. Watch this. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Watch now. Watch, watch, watch. I'm going to make it so plain. I'm going to make it so plain. Somebody may shout hallelujah. I'm going to make it real plain. Watch. <laughs> hallelujah. Watch this. Now listen. Now, 
What did I tell you? What did he send Jesus for? He sent him to save and deliver the people. Did he not? Now watch. Watch the, the ministry he gave him. Watch this. Watch. This type is for deliverance and salvation. It's not to impress you. It's not so that you can esteem. It is to deliver and give salvation. Watch. But what I want, verse number, I'm just going to take three and four. And three says, behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. Listen to this. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore think you evil in your hearts? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why would God give Jesus an understanding of the thoughts of their heart? Because this would give them knowledge of the authority that heaven had. And heaven was extending to them deliverance and salvation from the darkness they abided in and trusted in. God makes it very clear. What is the purpose for giving this type of ministry to a prophet that people would know the authority of heaven in the earth to reveal the thoughts of the heart? The purpose of the ministry is salvation and deliverance. Are you hearing me? So the Lord is making it very plain to the remnant. The purpose of the ministry that you are partaking of presently is salvation and deliverance. And listen to what the Lord says. He's speaking to you according to your heart. And he says, when you see this, meaning the remnant, he says, your hearts shall rejoice in the Lord and not in the increase. Now watch this. This is what's good because you're going to have to search your heart and realize this. God knows your heart much better than you do because his speech is sure according to his knowledge of your heart. He says, you are not going to rejoice in the increase. You are going to rejoice in the Lord and seeing the authority of the Lord. So remember what I told you. The Lord considers things that are impossible for us to consider concerning his timing. And so his timing is according to his knowledge of the thoughts of our heart. So he's saying to the remnant, I know exactly how you're going to respond to what you're about to see. You will rejoice in the Lord because when heaven says rejoice, it ain't talking about rejoicing in no increase. It ain't talking about rejoicing in the works of your own hand. It is talking about rejoicing in the Lord. And the Lord is sure that the remnant, when they see this, they will rejoice in the Lord and not in the increase. And seeing it, it will cause them to grow quickly in the things of the Lord. Through everything God has taken you through, through all that he's put you through, he has made you teachable. You want me to sit on that one again? You want me to say it again? He's made you teachable. Listen to him. He's sure. And his manifestation is a random. His manifestation is according to his knowledge of the thoughts of your heart. And there's a surety to his speech towards you. And he says, when you see it, you will rejoice in the Lord and not in the increase and that you will grow quickly in the things of the Lord. I'm done right here. And the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation towards his enemies. Let me say this to you. The Lord wants you to understand his purpose for bringing you to this place and prospering you. Are you hearing me? Listen to me. The Lord wants you to understand his purpose for bringing you to this place and prospering you. And his purpose for bringing you to this place and prospering you is that you may serve him and that he may give you rest from your enemies through causing them to suffer the shame that they have caused you to suffer. When the Lord gives you rest from your enemies, he gives you rest, but he also causes them to suffer shame. But to the remnant, hear me, he needs you to understand his purpose for bringing you to this place. It is that you may serve the Lord. This is not like church where you just go in and, and you there. No, he's telling you, 
the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants. So the purpose for bringing you and prospering you is to establish that his authority abides with you and that you may serve him. Are you hearing me? That you may serve him and that he, let me say, I, I, I have to say this to make people get this. Anytime you trust the Lord, for those of you that have been listening for months and you've put your confidence in it, and your confidence in the word of the Lord has made you enemies, then those became the enemy. They became the Lord's enemies according to your faithfulness. So therefore, there's appointed time to deal with the enemies of your faithfulness. This is the appointed time to deal with the enemies of your faithfulness. So therefore, please understand, you are not coming just to come. You're coming twofold. You're coming first to abide, to, that the Lord would establish that his authority abides in this place and for you to serve him, but also in prospering you, it is to give you rest from the enemies of your faith that you have made through having confidence in the words of the Lord that he has given you this last season. Are you understanding? So he needs you to understand your purpose for coming. Your purpose for coming, you ain't coming just to come. You're coming to serve and also get rest. Hallelujah. From the enemies of your faith. Let me say this and I'm done. To the remnant, know this, that this is the season that the Lord will cause you to move. Listen to him. This is the season that the Lord will cause you to move. This is a season of movement. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I'm done. Listen, go back over it. Go through it. Listen to it. But know this. Listen to the Lord in it. If you got nothing, I'm going to say this again, because this was the thing that, that just saturated my heart. Hear me. Watch. The work of the ministry of the prophet, it ain't, it ain't about impressing you. It ain't about wowing you. It ain't about woeing you. The purpose of the ministry of the prophet or the work of the prophet is about salvation and deliverance. Are you hearing me? It's about salvation and deliverance. So please understand when the Lord sends a prophet, it ain't to impress you. It ain't to wow you. It ain't to woe you. The purpose of that prophet, understand the works of are intended to give you deliverance and salvation. I'm going to say it again. Go through your Bible. Moses came to save and deliver them. Elijah came to save and deliver them. Jesus came to save and deliver them. Please do not be deceived. It ain't about impressing you or woeing you or wowing you. It is to deliver you and give you salvation. God, we thank you for everything that you said here tonight. We glorify you for your truth. We glorify, glorify you for the liberty and the, and the deliverance that you have ordained for your people. We thank you for every question that you've answered here tonight. And we give you glory and honor for the clarity which you have allowed to go forth. We bless your holy name, sure that not one word will fall to the ground nor return unto you void. So we thank you for all that are listening and for all the words that you've put in their heart. God, we stand right now in the season of movement, waiting for every commandment. We bless you. We praise you. Right now in the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. Amen. Hey, good night to everybody. Have a good night.